What does that even mean, Bowers Game? Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review. With today, I'm very excited to check it out. Pirates Blast from Hava. This is for two players, ages five plus. It'll take you about 15 minutes to play. And in Pirates Blast, you're going to be taking these little booger suckers and trying to blow your ships over to your opponent's area. If you do that, you're going to be trying to draw their treasure chest. But it's not that easy, as they are going to also be taking these little booger, shucker, booger suckers blowing cubes out of a cannon and trying to attack you with those cubes what am i talking about let's open it up and i'll show you how it works all right then we're gonna take a look at what you're gonna get inside of pirates blast first and foremost we got our handy dandy rule booklet you're gonna need about three pages out of it double-sided full color full of pictures illustrations examples and it's very well done it should have you up and running in no time at all it's also a very simple game so i can teach you how to play right now so in Pirates Blast, each player is going to get a little pirate ship. They're going to try and sail this pirate ship over to their opponent's bay over here. You're going to do that by using this little booger sucker right here and blowing it all the way over to your opponent's side of the base. But it's not that easy because they are going to be loading up their little cannon that they have, filling it with these little cubes, and then shooting out little cubes at your ship trying to hit you. Because if they hit you, it will be their turn to blow their ship over to your bay. What's the goal, though? You're trying to get three of these little... Three of these little treasure chests right down here. The first person to get three of their opponent's treasure chests is going to win the game. So how does it all work? First and foremost, what you're going to do is you're going to decide who's going to go first. Who's going to be the blower first. So let's just say green is the blower first. What they're going to do is they're going to roll this six-sided die right here. It's either going to have three, two, uh, or zero on it. I believe there are, no, I guess there's no one. It's either two, three, or zero on there. And that's how many times you are going to get to blow your ship. So two times I started my harbor, which is cardboard by the way, in case you're wondering. And then one and two. So those were really terrible blows. I'm also playing, oh, so there, there's a pretty good blow. I'm also playing on a felt table, which makes it a little bit more difficult. On a flat surface, they do work a lot better. I do want to I'll mention that. So I would be right here. So what's going to happen now is my opponent is going to be able to load up their cannon and try and shoot my ship uh, and as you can see this is one of the big cons of the game which i'll get into at the end uh they're going to load up a cube and they're going to try and shoot it out at my ship if they hit my ship my turn as the blower is over and then they are going to roll the dice and then blow their ship as many space or as many times as they get on the die however if they miss i will once again roll the die and blow that many times so let's just say one two and three so let's say I finally get to their harbor. Hooray, that's good for me. What's going to happen now is I get to draw one of their face down tiles over here, hoping to get treasure. Unfortunately, I did not get treasure this turn. I actually got a blank one, which means I put that back face down over here and I go back to my starting area and they are now going to roll the dice as they will be the blower. However, what can happen sometimes is that I get the treasure. If I get the treasure, I put it right next to me and I am one third of the way to winning the game. Anywho, you're going to alternate turns back and forth, shooting cannons, trying to draw a treasure chest, and the first person to get three treasure chests is going to be the winner of Pirate's Blast. And that, in a nutshell, is how the game is all played. Alrighty then, Pirate's Blast from Hobbit Games. What are my final thoughts? Let's go to the pros, let's go over the cons. First on the con side, not going to be for a lot of people. Two players, going to be an instant turn off to some people. Also, this is a children's game, pure and simple. Uh, while it does, it looks really cool, and adults will want to try it out, and they probably will try it out, it's just such a shallow game, especially for adults at least, that it's not going to be a game that you're going to be able to bust out with anyone aside from children. Also, even for hobby games, I felt like this game was a little bit shallow too, continuing on with the con side, because all you're really going to be doing is using this booger sucker to blow the ships and using the booger sucker to aim the cannon and try and fire the cannon. And I just would have liked a little bit more in the game. But unfortunately, they do have a little bit more, I guess, which is the uh, the element of luck where you might draw the blank one or you might draw the treasure one. And if you draw three treasures in a row and no blanks, then you're probably just going to win the game, especially if someone else draws the blanks. Uh, but that's neither here nor there. Um, continuing onward, though, to some real cons. The cannonballs in this game are garbage. And I don't normally mention components in Hobbit Games uh, reviews except to say that they're fantastic but in this game, that is not the case because these stupid little cannonballs will get stuck in the cannons repeatedly. Now, I luckily figured out very early on that you need to put them in there very gently when you're loading them, and then I didn't have any more problems. But everybody else I played with, and I mean everybody, not just, not hyperbole here, literally 
Every other person I played this with had issues with the cannonball getting stuck. A bunch of people online had issues with the cannonballs getting stuck. And it's just annoying and it's a nuisance. And they really should have saw that one coming. This one, uh, it just seems like a glaring oversight that they did not have round cannonballs. Probably because they just had cubes on hand or something like that. Uh, but I found a solution online that worked out really well, which is where you roll up a little tinfoil ball. They actually shoot better and they shoot further. So I do recommend doing that if you get this game or if you already have this game. Another con that I have with this game, and this is a big con, is the age range on this game, in my opinion, is wrong. As many of you know, I'm a preschool teacher. I work with three to five-year-olds. So I got this right after Gen Con. And I got this at Gen Con, and then I played it a whole bunch right after Gen Con, which is right before my five-year-olds are getting ready to go to kindergarten. So they're older on the five-year-old scale. They're maybe five and a half. Some even were close to six. And all of them, Every single one of them, which was about 12 kids I tried this with, had issues with the booger sucker. They could not get the thing to work, and that just frustrated them to no ends because this game looks really cool. And I'm sitting over here, and I'm blowing cannons, and I'm doing this, and I'm doing that, and they wanted to play with me, and they just got incredibly frustrated with this thing. And even me and my wife at certain points were just like, you have to squeeze it in just the right way, and that's unfortunate because... The game is cool when it works. I'm going to talk about that in the pros. But this booger sucker, these booger suckers are very difficult to use, especially for tiny hands. Any other cons I have with the game? No. Moving on to the pros, I'm still going to give this one a recommendation because when I played it with older kids, this one went over really well. They had a lot of fun with this game, and it's it's easy to see why. Because it's a really cool idea for a game. Uh, now, in the middle part, I actually have them set, away, set up so that they're not so far away. Uh, but when you actually play with kids, you can set it up however you want to do. You can put obstacles. What the kids really like to do was set up obstacles with, like, Legos. So you'd have to navigate your ship around icebergs and other pirate ships and stuff like that. And they were actually making up other rules with the game. And that was really cool. And we had a lot of fun with this game. But... This is a big but. I do not recommend this game if your kid is under seven, I don't think. Just flat out, not going to do it. Uh, but ages seven to say 10, 12, something like that, they're going to have a lot of fun with this game. And that's why I'm going to give this game a pass. Also, the game is a little bit on the older side. I got this one on clearance, so I have a feeling that if you're looking for it, you'll probably be able to find it a little bit cheaper. But the components are really nice, it looks really cool, it has curb appeal, and if you replace the little cubes with little round metal balls, it is a much better game. Uh, oh, last con, because there's still another con I need to mention, is that as you saw in the middle part, playing on felt is not the best idea. You really do need a flat playing surface to get the best out of this game. But, Pirate's Blast, it has a lot of cons, it has a lot of problems. But when it works, it works very, very well. So Pirate's Blast from Hobbit Games, one that I'm going to give a very, very lukewarm recommendation if you have kids ages 7 plus and you're in the market for a two-player game. And also if you have two tinfoil later on the house. But if you enjoyed this review, please sure to click on that subscribe button down below in the comments below. Let me know, do you have a game like Pirate's Blast for me? Where you see it and you're like, oh, this is what's wrong with this game. And this is what's wrong with this game. And this is what's wrong with this game. And this is what's wrong with this game. But I still have a lot of fun with the game from time to time. Do you have that game? What is that game for you? That game that has such a laundry list of cons, but still, you enjoy it and you like it. Uh, for me, obviously, it would be Pirate's Blast. But let me know in the comments below what that game is for you. And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.